Welcome to episode six. Today we're going to talk about procedural generation and we're going to apply some basic procedural generation techniques to generate our landscape map. Just as an aside, uh, I'll leave a link to this in the, in the description, uh, but Redbob Games has a lot of really good tutorials and um, one of the tutorials that I used to generate this video uh, was this one about making maps with noise functions. We'll reference the techniques inside of this heavily. So to generate a procedural landscape, we kind of need to generate some sort of randomness to represent what the terrain is going to look like. So if you imagine we're generating kind of a height map of a terrain on a 1D axis, we might want to end up, end up with a function that looks something like this uh, on the left here. The maybe initial way we might try to do that is we might just think we could uh, open up a random number generator and generate floats from like uh, negative one to one. If we did that, we would uh, we'd have a bunch of these random spikes and there's not really any continuous flow of a landscape. So one of the... Um, technologies that was invented to counteract that was uh, Perlin noise. Uh, and then open simplex noise was adapted from Perlin noise. Uh, and that's what we'll be using today. And uh, what that type of noise is, it's called a gradient noise. Uh, and what it will do is it'll generate this kind of uh, continuous line of noise, uh, which which is a little bit more interesting and looks a little bit more organic and like a, um, uh, a landscape, which is kind of our eventual goal. There's a lot of different techniques for generating uh, landscapes, but this is the one we're going to start with. So next, let's talk about how we're going to use open simplex noise to generate a final island. These graphs are kind of a 1D representation of what our eventual goal is, which is a 2D grid of uh, different tiles. And then we want to define each tile depending on uh, like a tile type. So for example, we're going to have grass tiles, we're going to have dirt tiles, which represent kind of a beachfront uh, area, and then we're going to have water tile, which represents the um, the remaining area of the map. On a first pass with open simplex noise, we could generate a very low frequency curve like this, um, which which would probably give us kind of like a general blob, uh, but it wouldn't look very interesting once we zoom in close uh, up close. Uh, so what we end up doing is we'll end up generating a low frequency noise, and then it will also generate a high frequency noise, and then we'll overlay the high frequency high frequency noise on top of the low frequency noise. And then that'll give us uh, a low frequency general boundary when we zoom out far, but then when we zoom in close, we'll have an interesting little coastline. And also notably, uh, the high frequency noise that we'll generate will be at a lower amplitude than the low frequency noise. And what, the reason we want to do this is, is because we want the coastline to dominate, or the, the low frequency curve of the coastline to dominate, uh, but, but we want a little bit of um, variation to go on. So kind of the sum, the sum of these two kind of uh, ends up equaling something like this. We have this kind of uh, general trend of a, of a bump, which kind of represents our island that goes down into the water. But then we also have some low, uh, some high frequency variation uh, inside of that to give it a little bit more interesting feel. And um, so once we have once we have our uh, noise curve generated, we're going to treat it like a height map, and then we're going to uh, analyze every height of every tile to determine uh, what tile type it should be. So we'll basically define a water line, and every tile below that is going to be considered, or every height. In the height map that's below that water line, we'll call a water tile. And then we're gonna have a beach line. For every height that's above below the beach line, but above the water line, we'll call a dirt tile. And then every tile above the beach line and the water line, uh, we'll call a grass tile. Lastly, we'll use a few extra techniques in our procedural generation, but I won't go into those right now. Okay, now on to coding. Uh, actually, the first thing I want to do is I want to do a little bit of cleanup though, um, because I've been somewhat disorganized on a few things. Uh, so we'll do a small amount of cleanup this episode, maybe a few other episodes, just to get things back on track, uh, because constantly refactoring uh, seems like a good idea to me. So the first thing we're going to do is um, probably not a good thing to have everywhere, uh, but I'm, I'm going to have it here just because uh, all of our error checking code um, right now, we just want it to panic, and um, it, it ends up being a lot of extra if statements. So what some people will typically do is they'll write a check function, and they'll pass an error to it. And then if there was an error, they'll just panic in this check function. Uh, and that makes our code a little bit cleaner, uh, but it's something that we don't want to have everywhere. We just want to have it whenever we have a truly fatal error. So I'm going to copy the if statement out of here and write a new function. So then this will be our check function. Next, I'm going to go through all of these if statements and just replace uh, with check, replace these with check error. Okay, cool. I got them all. I think uh, let's run our code now and just make sure it's still running. Cool. So it's still there. If you recall, we still have our um, just grid of grass tiles. The next thing I want to do is I want to configure the man position. Now that we have a camera and we have uh, kind of the concept of a world space, 
uh, it's not really useful to find the center of the window because that's not really a meaningful point in world space. So instead, let's, uh, let's set a spawn position and we'll set the spawn position to the center of the tile map. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the tile map code uh, above all of the person creation code. So we'll have to create people code after the uh, create tile map code. And the reason for that is because once we create the people code or once we create the people, uh, it'll be nice to have the map size available so we can find the center of the map. And then we'll create a spawn point like so. So we'll basically just be creating a pixel.v, which is a pixel.vector. Uh, and then in that, we're gonna have uh, the map size divided by two, which kind of represents the center tile of the map. And then we'll multiply that by the tile size, which is the the size of each tile in the number of pixels it is. Uh, so in our case, it's, we're using 16 by 16 tiles, so it'll be 16 here. Uh, and that'll, that'll uh, get us on the center point of the map. And we'll do the same for X as we do for Y. And then instead of using man position and hat man position, when we create our people, we'll just do spawn point. So spawn point here, and then spawn point here. All right, now let's run our code again. And then as you can see, now our person's uh, dead in the center. Perfect. So the next thing I want to do is I want to clean up how our tiles get created. Uh, if you recall before, I was just saying grass tile is going to be represented by zero. So what we'll do next is we'll actually um, create an enum or goes equivalent of an enum, uh, which represents the different tile types. And then we'll create a function which d takes in a tile type and returns uh, what the tile object should look like. Let's go to the bottom and define that down here. So the first, so uh, this notation basically specifies that everything inside of the parentheses is going to be a constant. And then what, we, what we're saying here is we're is we're specifying a grass tile type, or sorry, we're specifying a grass tile constant, uh, which is of type tile map dot tile type, and then we're specifying it uh, to be equivalent to iota. And what iota is, it's this um, like starting point that will uh, automatically increment as we go down this um, as we go down this list of things we're specifying in the constants parentheses. So this will essentially be set to zero, and then it'll automatically increment and set this one to one. And then it'll automatically increment again and set this one to two. Uh, and notably, every type inside of this constant is going to take this type. Uh, because they're constants, they'll be useful as uh, basically an enumeration of the different tile types, types we want to handle. So this will be our get tile function. And uh, what we'll take in is the sprite sheet because we need to pull out the correct sprite for this tile. And we'll also take in the tile type that we want to create a tile from. So the start of this function, what we'll do is we'll define a sprite name uh, variable, and then we'll then we'll uh, check through a switch statement depending and depending on the tile type, we'll set that sprite name to the name that we want to pull out of the sprite sheet. Next, we'll pull out that sprite uh, based off of the sprite name that we calculated before, and then we'll also check our error. And then finally, we'll return the uh, tile that we're going to create. And the tile is just going to be set to tile type. Uh, the type is going to be the um, uh, tile type that we passed in. And then the sprite is going to be set to the sprite that we pulled out of the sprite sheet. Cool. So now that we've written this function, let's start using it above. I'm going to go to, uh, instead of splitting the screen, I'm just going to go to one screen because I think it's maybe easier to see everything laid out. So now instead of building our tile here, we can just use our get function or uh, get use our getter function. And then also, also we'll uh, use our enumeration here to specify that the tile we want to get is the grass tile. All right, let's run our code. Yeah, and now that we're not using this uh, sprite creation up here, because we're using our get tile function, we can remove that. Cool, so everything's still working properly. All right, so back in our main.go uh, go project, um, let's start creating our procedural generation. So I'm going to make a package called pgen, and that's going to hold all of our procedural generation code. Then inside of here, I'm going to make a file called noisemap.go. This is going to hold what I described at the start of this video, which is basically the technique of uh, overlaying different frequencies on top of each other uh, into one final noise map that we'll use to generate our terrain. So we can open the file here, and now it's, ju it's just an empty file right now. So let's specify the package declaration. Then we're going to import an open simplex go project, uh, which is basically 
well, it's going to do the open simplex noise portion of this uh, procedural generation so that we don't have to write our own open simplex noise generator. So this will represent our noise map object. And what this will do is, or what this will hold, is it'll hold the seed. It'll hold the open simplex.noise ob object that we got from our open simplex go package. It'll also hold an exponent. And I'll explain how we're going to use the exponent when we get down to our get noise function. We'll also have a fa fairly standard uh, constructor, which basically just passes everything into the noise map, but also notably generates a new normalized uh, noise object to, to hold in our noise uh, field of our noise map. So here's our get noise function. I'm just going to call it get. So what this will return is it'll return a noise value from zero to one uh, based off of the X and Y position. So it'll kind of take the X and Y position. Uh, we'll call the uh, open simplex noise generator to generate noise for that X and Y position. And then it'll return that noise. And what X and Y is going to represent here in our case, it'll represent the uh, tile location in the grid that we want to generate noise for. Also notably that uh, we want this to be deterministic so that every single X and Y combo that we pass in here will always return the same exact uh, noise value. And that's one of the properties of uh, open simplex noise is that it's deterministically generated. Okay, so this will be the starting point of our get noise function. And then we'll kind of use this initially um, and then we'll start building on it and adding a few of the extra features that we had wanted, such as overlaying different frequencies and then also using this exponent that I defined above uh, to kind of squeeze the noise uh, into a certain pattern that we want. Let's go back to our main.go file and we will start using our noise map. So let's import our pgen uh, package now that we've created it. So if you, want to, if you want to generate the same map every time, you, do, you need to start with the same seed. Uh, so you can create a seed like so uh, and just cast it as an N64 and then whatever number you want to specify, you could pass into here. Uh, alternatively, you can do this. You can specify your seed to the current nan time in nanoseconds uh, of, of the UTC time zone. So what this will do is it'll generate a different N64 every single time. And then in, a, uh, in turn, that'll generate a different uh, noise map for us. Let's also bump our map size up to 500. And we're not using the exponent yet, so I'm just going to set it to 1.0. And then we're going to uh, use the pgen package to generate our our new noise map, uh, or to generate our noise map uh, struct. And then we'll assign it to terrain. And what this is basically going to, how it's going to be used, is it's basically going to kind of represent the height map uh, of our terrain at every tile point. So then we can use our terrain uh, noise map to get uh, the height at every single x and y position uh, in our in our four in our two d four loop that we're using to generate each of our tiles. So we'll get our height, and then we'll have kind of a conditional if statement where we determine what tile we want to use for that position. So we'll do if height is less than water level, we'll specify a water tile, and the water tile is specified here. And we'll have an else if, 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 else if the height is less than the beach level, um, then uh, we'll use the dirt tile tile type. And then finally, if all else fails, uh, i.e. if we're higher than the beach level, then uh, we'll just use the grass tile. So the last thing we need to do is we need to specify uh, our different uh, water and dirt and beach levels. So we'll call the water level 0 0.5 and the beach level will just be uh, 0 0.1 higher than that. So we'll make the beach level 1, 0.1 higher than the water level. All right, let's cross our fingers and run it and see what happens. So uh, we had forgotten to uh, go get this um, package. So we can do that now. So I'm just going to execute it down at the bottom here. So that gets that package. We can do go generate and go run. Oops. So this should be eval2. And that was because I forgot to uh, create the X and Y noise objects. And what these are going to be is they're just going to be casted versions of our uh, X and Y positions. So X noise. So X and Y noise are, ju are just the float 64 versions of our uh, X and Y position. And then because we're using this time dot now, I had forgotten to add in the time import or the time package. Okay. And then uh, we had an invalid sprite name and that was because we haven't actually created our um, dirt and water tiles yet. So then back in our MMO head folder uh, in the images section, I've gone ahead and created um, three three new sprites and also notably i'm going to change the uh, original grass sprite instead of having these little speckles um it looked kind of weird when i had generated it before so i removed it to just be like plain grass and i also added dirt and water 
All right. So here's our starting point. And this is very uh, noisy looking, I guess, but there is some pattern to it. As you can see, uh, the grass is together. And the reason it's so noisy is because the frequency that we're using to generate our noise is so high that that like the highs and lows vary like this quickly. So what we want to do is we want to decrease the frequency so that we can uh, generate something that's a little bit nicer looking. So here we can actually pick a frequency and we'll use uh, 0 0.001 and that'll make it a hundredth of uh, as frequent. So how we'll apply the frequencies, we'll do frequency times uh, float 64 casted X position and a fr frequency times the float 64 casted Y position. All right, now we have some very smooth noise and this is kind of what I was talking about before where there's this uh, general trend uh, of the islands, but uh, they're not that interesting looking because once you zoom in, it's kind of just like this strange curve. So we want to have a few different frequencies overlaid uh, and how we're going to accomplish that is uh, by applying what we're going to call octaves. And those will be the different frequencies at different amplitudes that we want to use. And also we can, we can play around with these numbers and uh, you'll find that there's a lot of this that you have to do with this type of uh, noise generation. You have to play with, play with the numbers, the input numbers uh, a lot, just to make sure that you find the exact pattern that you're looking for. So we can kind of uh, go in both directions and you'll see how, uh, everything changes. Oh, wow. That one's just dirt. But I found uh, 001 as a, or sorry, 01 as a pretty good um, midpoint for our map size. Well, that's all I have for today. If you like this video and want to see more, be sure to hit the subscribe button.